So this is another video that we've put together, mainly because we get asked a lot of questions about the ECU mapping process. And a lot of questions is, why it takes so long? We, we always say it takes a full day and ideally leave the bike with us for the day. So we thought we'd do a quick video to explain the prep that we do and also some of the process that we'll go through on the screens and how we actually map the bike and get the results that we get. So if you drop the bike off for us, the first thing we do before it even goes on the dyno, before we even make any changes whatsoever, even prep it, it we will check the condition of the bike. So the first thing, chain condition, oil level. We can't put a bike on here with no oil in it because it's going to go bang. And if the chain's orange, rusty and about to fall off, it's no good either. So they're the first few checks we do. The second, and probably the thing that sets us apart quite a lot to a lot of other dyno centers, is to change the tyre. And people ask us why. So without getting too boring or going into too much detail, this tyre is really, really hard. We joke around, say it's made of oak. And that allows us for very, very accurate mapping and consistent power figures. So what do we mean by that? Well, Paul will give us this bike, nicely for him to do the video and for let us do the map. He had a Bridgestone S20 on there, brand new. And the last thing you want after you get the bike back and you've had the map done is to have a tyre that's square down the middle and ruined. From a mapping perspective and for us to, get, to give you the most accurate results possible, if the tyre is getting hot, it's getting sticky, it's going to stick to the drum and that's going to sap power. So especially when we go into the ignition side of life when we're setting up, the gains are very small and we have to make sure that our readings are so accurate that we can see we're going the right way, right amount of ignition advance, retard, etc. So that's very quickly why we put this tyre on. Moving along, in terms of the prep again for safety of the bike, charging point, we like to keep the bike charged at all times, especially when we're flashing, we don't want low voltage, we don't want any issues when we're riding to the ECU. Pin the ECU, with Woolwich software is what we use on most of the Japanese bikes, we use a few other companies, but Woolwich is the predominant one for most of your Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki range. So that's, that's a little bit more, we'll go into detail later on down the video, what the Wallace does, what we can do for the most bikes and give you a general understanding of that as well. Moving on again, this is, it's readily available for all dyno centres, but it's not a lot, it's not a, something that gets used a lot. We, we love it because it, it quality controls us as a tuner. So this is an analog takeoff. So what we use this for is to monitor our throttle inputs. So when you see when John goes through the tables later on, like the electronic throttle valve tables on this particular bike, your input is not your output. So we can show that we make adjustments to the electronic throttle tables by recording it through, through this. We won't bore you of the voltage readings and all that that we get, but that's the basic point of it. On the quality control side, what it allows us to do if we're mapping, for example, and we've got a table that has 10%, 11%, and say 12% throttle, if we're even the slightest bit out, it may read from the wrong fueling column. So this allows us to make sure we're doing an accurate job when we're mapping and tuning your bike. Next one, you'll see at every dyno centre, your RPM pickup. This can go on your pen coils around the HT lead, or you can find the correct wire on the ECU. And then finally, the pair valve system. You need to cap that. It's an emissions device that injects fresh air into the exhaust system. It gives a leaner reading. Obviously, we need to know exactly what's going on within this engine, so that has to be capped or blocked off. It can be done there or within the air box. And one last other thing, again, it's just another, just to stop electrical interference, we air the bike to the dyno itself. That stops us getting any strange readings. You may get a spike or high torque, high power. We don't want any of that. We want accuracy at all times. So that's why that's air on. That, in a very, very quick nutshell, is the prep on this bike. If you take into account this one's super, super easy to get to and everything's on the side of the bike after a few volts, the prep on this takes us, with a tyre change, roughly around an hour, maybe just over. If we have a bike, say, a CBR 1000 or a Fireblade, just getting them apart takes a while as well. Okay, so moving to the other side of the bike to continue our prep before we even get to the mapping process, we have coolant level. Now, this is a big one. The amount of bikes that come in with hardly any coolant, and especially race bikes with about a litre of water in there, is unbelievable. So that's a must when we're checking before we do the mapping process. Next one, which is again, probably the most important of the tuning process, is our O2 probes. 
we are all time to run two sensors on your bike. The reason being is again, it's quality control and safeguarding our own equipment. If we have a sensor that starts dropping out mid mapping, we will be able to see that, and then we have backup sensors that we have a, a big stock of brand new sensors at all times that we can then test and see if a sensor is dropping out. Again, this stops any inaccuracy with the mapping and allows us to give you the best possible job. But the last part of the prep is going to be your air filter. Now, most of our customers will put a KN or a BMC or an MWR filter in there, but what we do before we run the bike is we will check. Obviously, we need to know for our notes whether we're running a standard filter or not. And more importantly, is it clean? Even if you just want to replace it with a standard filter, if you've got one that's completely blocked up, it's going to make the mapping inaccurate. As soon as you go for a service with us or a dealership or whatever, and they put a brand new clean filter in there, it's going to alter the fueling. So, an air filter check is a must and is essential before we do any mapping. Now, we'll pass it over to John, who's going to go through some of the software what the tables mean, what we do, and why we do it. Okay, we're trying to keep this as, as condensed as possible. Essentially, what we do when the bike comes in is we'll save the original file into our database, just in case we ever do need it in the future, or if you wanted to revert back to stock. We'll do a more complicated video, more in-depth video, about the actual base files that we then run. But moving from that is once we actually do the fueling mapping, or the actual mapping of the ECU, this is where a lot of the time is taken, so I just want to quickly show you what we're doing there. So essentially what we do is, once we've got the base map on the bike, we run the bike through a lot of different positions. So this is the main fueling table for this bike. This is the throttle table, but we've got two to go through. So these at the top are our throttle input. So as you can see, if you watch the little green box, as we open the throttle, it goes between the different values. So what we essentially do is we run it, say for example, at 11% throttle, and then, or 12% throttle, and then we'll hold it all the way through the engine speed. And at that point, we're able to go back into the map, which is over here. So once we've ran that, that bike at that position, it brings us up this graph, which then gives us our throttle position, which we log, as Paul's mentioned before, we take an analog input to make sure that we're accurate with this, um, which is here. And then this is our air fuel. And then what we essentially do is we'll change the values on this map so on that column we would adjust the values to our target AFR value and we'll do that for every column which is obviously why it takes quite a long time because once we've done this once that's not necessarily the end of the game we then flash that back to the ECU with the adjustments and then we will rerun and redo the entire thing again this can take a few hours just to simply do that process and on top of that once we've done the throttle map table. We'll also go through to the intake air pressure map. So this is a completely different sensor that runs a different set of adjustments. So again, basically the same principle. What we'll do is we will run the bike through these um, values and then change them to achieve our target value. And these are literally just quantity values. So we'll just adjust them on the fly as we're running the bike to see, to achieve our value. And that, that's simply it, but it takes a long process to repeat and achieve the value that we're after.